That's me. Since high school, I've been pretty into the field of medicine called endocrinology, which, when I get a blank stare in response to the word endocrinology, I usually say endocrinology is just like hormones and stuff. Why do I like it? Well, first, it gives me the excuse that I'm just being hormonal, when in reality my personality is just generally aggressive and unpleasant, but I digress. More so, I think it's cool. Endocrinology deals with so many necessary life functions, like metabolism, growth, sleep, mood, and everyone's favorite, reproduction. So hormones are signaling molecules. When hormones bind to their specific receptor on a target cell, a signal transduction pathway is activated. One class of hormones is the steroid hormone class. Natural steroids are synthesized from cholesterol, so they're pretty lipid soluble and can therefore diffuse through the cell membrane and bind to nuclear receptors. Within steroid hormones, there are five groups based on the type of receptor the steroid hormone binds to. One class is called the androgens, which include the famous hormone testosterone and truly define manhood. It was commonly thought that androgens are wholly good for males and wholly bad for females. For males, androgens are key players in male sexual development, but females, they seemed solely detrimental. For example, excess androgens in women can often cause polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS, a disorder with a prevalence thought to be as high as 20% in the female population, which can be characterized by symptoms such as weight gain, facial hair, and infertility. Regardless of PCOS, excess of androgens in women is also associated with diabetes and heart disease. However, in global androgen receptor knockout mice, the females had decreased fertility, defective follicular development, and premature ovarian failure. And this led to the idea that androgen signaling is essential for female reproductive health. So this brings us to my protein of interest, the androgen receptor. Because the androgen receptor is a nuclear receptor, the androgen receptor, when activated by androgens, translocates into the nucleus and acts as a transcription factor. This is the crystal structure of just the ligand binding domain of the androgen receptor bound to an androgen called dihydrotestosterone, or DHT. There are 10 alpha helices in this binding domain, as shown, and they're oriented in a three-layer way with the alpha helices running anti-parallel to each other. This helix contains the main residues interacting with the hydrophobic ligand DHT, which are primarily leucine and phenylalanine residues. Now in this image, the arrow is pointing to the alpha helix that acts as a sort of lid for the DHT. Binding of the ligand causes a conformational change that moves this helix into this position, and this beta turn here serves as a lock to keep that helix in place. These three alpha helices here are now in a more favorable position for interacting or dimerizing with co-regulators for transcriptional up or down regulation of specific genes. And this demonstrates one way that the androgen receptor is allosterically regulated by a ligand as well as by the co-regulators. Now this image shows another important domain of the androgen receptor called the DNA binding domain. This is the part of the protein that binds to specific sequences of DNA when acting as a transcription factor. However, this image shows two androgen receptors dimerized, and both DNA binding domains are interacting with the DNA. These two sets of alpha helices are arranged as a helix turn helix motif, which allows for DNA binding because these alpha helices fit well in the major grooves of the DNA. These small gray dots are zinc ions and are characteristic of zinc fingers, which are structural motifs that help stabilize the folds in this domain and also help determine the binding specificity by creating these protrusions in the structure. This binding domain is also allosterically regulated by the binding of ligands in the ligand binding domain, in which the activation of the androgen receptor at the ligand binding domain increases the affinity of the DNA binding domain to create more stable complexes with DNA. So what exactly does the androgen receptor do to promote normal female reproductive health? Well, it remains incompletely understood. But in 2014, research suggested that androgens, through androgen receptor actions, induce expression of microRNA 125b, which is a specific RNA that targets and regulates the expression of pro-apoptotic proteins, or proteins that promote cell death in the ovary. While there are still several mysteries left to be solved in the realm of female reproductive health, 
These very recent, exciting findings involving the roles of androgens in the androgen receptor have brought us closer to fully understanding infertility, PCOS, and the other relevant and prevalent reproductive disorders in women.